This video is sponsored by Altium. Until now, we have implemented the encoder and decoder block of the UNET architecture. In this lecture, we are going to use those encoder and decoder blocks to implement the entire UNET architecture. Here in this simple diagram, we can see how those layers are going to be used. Before you start, you need to remember one important thing, that both image and mask would have same height and width. Now let's continue with the coding. First of all, we will need to define a function called buildUnet. Next it will have an input layer. So we say input equals two, and then we would need to provide it a shape, which will be the input shape to this buildUnet function. Now the input layer is completed. It should be followed by the encoder block. So we have four encoder blocks inside the encoder network. We write encoder block and its input would be the inputs layer and it will take the number of filters, that is 64. And the encoder block now outputs two variables. The first one is a skip connection or as short S1 and the second one is the pooling output or as short the P1. We need to have three more layers, so we say S2, then P2. We're going to copy this encoder block from here and set the input for the second encoder block as the output of the first encoder block. For this, we write P1, and then we will increase the number of filters by a factor of 2, that is from 64 to 128. The third layer is S3 and P3 encoder block. Now input would be P2, and number of filters is 256. Now it's time for the last encoder block, S4, then P4. Then we will call our encoder block function input as P3 and the number of filters will again increase to 512. So this is the encoder block. Now in between the encoder and the decoder we have a conv block. Here in this diagram you can see that it acts as a bridge connecting the encoder and the decoder. Let's add this bridge to our code. We can call the output for the bridge as B1. Write conv block and then set the input as P4 and the number of filters will again be 1024. Now it's time for the decoder block. Let's do one more step before moving on to that. Let's check how the layers work so far. This video is sponsored by Altium, the industry standard and most professional PCB design software on the market. I've used Altium for designing printed circuit boards to build my own custom Arduinos and high-speed on-edge computer vision projects. When I tested other PCB CAD softwares out there, I found that nothing came close to the flexibility, ease of use, and power of Altium Designer. I mean, if you ever worked on PCB design for computer vision applications, you know that transmitting video signals is a very delicate task, with many high-speed signals that you have to consider in terms of electromagnetic noise and crosstalk. Altium helps you to easily manage and route high-speed signals with length tuning to ensure that you receive clear image quality on the other end. What's really great is that we have partnered up with Altium to bring you an exclusive discount for our Augmented Startups community. Sign up with the link down below to get 30% off monthly of the perpetual license of Altium Designer. You can also try out Altium Designer for free for the first 15 days. Just click the link down below to get started. We're going to run the model. So, first of all, we need to define the input shape. Let's say our shape is 256 by 256. And then call our build unit function and give it an input shape. Let's execute it. We don't have anything printed on the screen. Now we will print all the major variables here. First of all, print all the skip connections because these skip connections need to be used in the decoder block. Okay, let's execute the cell again. We have an error. These should have been S3 and S4. I'll execute it again and now we can see the shape of each skip connection. They are 256 by 256 then 128 by 128, then 264 by 264, and finally they are 32 by 32. Now let's move on to the decoder part. So we will have four decoder blocks. The output of the first decoder block will be D1. Its input will be B1. Then we're going to have a skip connection as S4, and the number of filters is half, 1024 divided by two, that is 512. So here we have the output of the first decoder. 
we write d1.shape. Let's run the code. You can see that it is 32 by 32. Now like this, we're going to have three more decoder blocks. Let me copy this part of the code and then change its input as D1 for the skip connection as S3 and for the number of filters 256. Then D3 in decoder block input will be D2, skip connection S2 and the number of filters 128. Then D4 decoder block, its input will be D3, skip connection S1 and the number of filters 64. Now we are done with our decoder part. Let's print the shape of D4. The shape of D4 should be the same as the input, which is 256 by 256. Okay, so here you can see the result. We just need to convert this 64 into 1. So we're going to reduce number of output channels from 64 to 1. For that, we're going to use a normal convolution layer, where it will take 1 as the output channel, 1 as the kernel size, and padding will be set as same. Now here we're going to provide an activation function, sigmoid, and the input will be D4. This layer is going to give an output. Output's variable contains the segmentation mask. Let's print this shape. You can see the shape is 256 by 256 by 1. We took an RGB image and we received a binary mask. This is the result of our network. We have all the layers now, so we can build the model. We are going to say model equals to model class. We have already imported this class here. This class is going to take the input and output of the network and connect all the layers. Now that our model is ready, we can also give it a name as unit. We return the model. OK, now the model will contain all the layers and to print their summary we are using a function called dot summary. Now you can see all the layers here. It begins with an input layer of shape 256 by 256, then followed by the encoder block where the height and the width are reduced slowly and progressively. Again, they are increased in the decoder part of the network, and finally, we would get an output with a shape of 256 by 256 by 1. So, this is the implementation of the UNET architecture, and in the coming lectures, we are going to train this model with segmentation datasets.